My name is Kekani Katija, and I'm excited to present the work of the Bioinspiration Lab at the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute. The IRIS project involves many individuals led by research engineer Paul Roberts, and we are grateful for the support from the Gordon Betty Moore Foundation. Our work seeks to understand the linkages between animal ecology and biomechanics within the natural environment of animals. In particular, the Bioinspiration Lab is committed to developing technologies that enable this work in the deep sea, a little explored environment that is notoriously difficult to access and yet home to countless organisms like this giant larvation or appendicularian you see here in its mucus house. One of the first instruments that we developed was Deep PIV, a laser-based imaging system that can be deployed from deep diving robots. DPIV enabled particle visualizations like the one you see here inside a giant larvation mucus house, as well as 3D reconstructions of gelatinous and mucus structures. While DPIV has led to significant advancements in our ability to measure and characterize animal fluid interactions in C2, the planar or two-dimensional nature of this technique is still limiting. Animals and the flows they experience in nature are inherently three-dimensional, and therefore we started to pursue three-dimensional or volumetric imaging techniques that could be deployed in the field. The approach that we landed on was light field or planoptic imaging. Light field imaging captures not only the intensity of light in the scene, but also its directionality to achieve volumetric imaging. There are two approaches to light field imaging. One, a single camera approach that you see in the diagram here, and two, multiple cameras that look at the same object. For the single camera approach, a micro lens array is placed between the camera sensor and camera lens, effectively subdividing the image into multiple views of the same object, where the number of views is equal to the number of lenses in the micro lens array. This is what a raw image would look like for a micro lens array with 26 lenses looking at particles moving in a water tank. Each dot corresponds to a different perspective view of a particle, and the spacing of that collection of dots indicates the depth or distance of that particle from the camera. Using that information, you can then generate a depth map where the colors represent the distance of that particle from the camera, and you can use that depth information to recreate an image where every object in the volume is in focus, and this is called a total focus image. And finally, you can then reconstruct point clouds or 3D surfaces in real time from a single light field image. We decided to start with the single camera light field approach and integrate this imaging system to Ambari's remotely operated vehicle, Mini ROV. This imaging system is called IRIS, which is inspired by the compound eyes of insects and uses a Raytrix camera that captures image data at 80 frames per second. The system is rated to 4,000 meters and provides real-time 3D visualization of objects, including animals, substrate, and particles underwater. We first deployed the system in August 2019, and you can see the iris camera here with its accompanying lights for illumination. This system has a fixed focal length of 50 millimeters, resulting in an imaged volume just under 8 liters with nearly 1 millimeter of depth resolution. Here is some iris data from the 2019 deployment showing a Solmissus jellyfish swimming at a depth of 200 meters in Monterey Bay. On the right, you're seeing a depth map that corresponds to the animal's body, its tentacles, and suspended particulate around it. The color map indicates depth where the warmer colors show features closer to the observer and the cooler colors further away. Note the ambient particle motion that is induced by the deformation of the bell and measurements like these could enable observations of organismal mechanics during turning and other complex behavior. Here's another example of data collected in 2019. This is a glass squid that we were able to observe and track for a period of time with the ROV as it swam downwards using both fin and jet propulsion. From the depth map you see in the center, we can reconstruct the animal's body as well as the fin movements. Unfortunately, we were using a fixed focal length, so we couldn't zoom in on these features and capture them at higher resolution. Regardless, we found these results very promising and we've continued on with our development of IRIS. From our initial deployments last year, we wanted to enable zoom or variable focal lengths and add a light array to control how objects are illuminated in the field of view of IRIS. We then went to work developing a system that incorporates a zoom lens as well as an individually controlled six module light array. We did our first test dives with a variant of the new system in August, 2020 
and we look forward to diving with the completed system in the spring of 2021. We are also pursuing multi-camera light field solutions like this one that will be integrated on Ambari's long-range AUV. This autonomous system will incorporate seven cameras and seven strobe lights for a 253 megapixel camera array that yields imaged volumes of two liters. This system can then be used to improve spatiotemporal sampling for questions related to natural particle concentrations and distributions. However, given that the system has reconfigurable optics, IRIS can also be used for a number of ecology studies involving midwater animals. If you're interested in using any of these systems for your research, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm incredibly grateful to our group and Henry Rule's team at Sencus that will integrate IRIS AUV data into NOAA's integrated ocean observing system. This work would not be possible without the generous support from the Moore Foundation and I want to thank our program manager, Adam Jones, for his input.